that being said, you you say that the, the club is on its own. It seems like yacht clubs are sort of struggling to find their place now in the America's Cup. They're, they're talking about making it more like a Formula One. They had so many issues with CNEV in the last two years. Do you, do you think the Yacht Club still has and should play the role that, that the Deed of Gift says that it should? Do you feel like maybe there's another way forward in the future? I think the Yacht Clubs are at the center of the tradition of the America's Cup. Uh, the minute you take the Yacht Club out of this event, uh, it no longer is a historic 160-year-old event. Uh, it's simply just another yacht race um, that's going on anywhere in the world. Um, and the Yacht Club is the thing that grounds that deed of gift and grounds that event uh, to something that, that is really traditional uh, and important. Um, and so there has been some talk. I remember back in 2007 uh, that, uh, that, Ernesto, uh, that Ernesto Bertarelli uh, was very interested in figuring out some way to get the Yacht Clubs um, out of the involvement uh, of this event. Um, and it's interesting that today um, uh, that, that A, that didn't happen, uh, but B, that the club has played such a, a pivotal role uh, in, uh, in kind of basically kind of rescuing this event uh, and getting us where we are today. At the same time, though, in the, in the history of the event, the Yacht Club's involvement also meant that there was then a place to host the next cup, and, yes. and that's sort of helpful. It, it hasn't happened anymore. I mean, this, this cup and 32nd cup were bid for and sailed somewhere far, far away from the Yacht Club's that essentially the defender was from. Will that continue in the future? Do you think if Oracle won, it would be hosted out of Golden Gate? Do you think if the cup isn't hosted at the Yacht Club where where they're challenging from or defending from, that it still should play such a big role? Well, that's a mouthful. I mean, there's, you got a lot of questions in there. I think um, uh, the goal right now is to get through this regatta, win this event, and then figure out what's going to happen next. I can tell you in, in conversations uh, with the team and conversations with Mr. Ellison, uh, the desire and hope is, of course, to have this in San Francisco. Um, but until we get to that point, um, it really does us no good to kind of uh, speculate on how the unveiling of the 34th America's Cup is really going to look like. And, uh, and we've got a lot of planning to do to get there. Another question, in terms of the history of the Cup, the Deed of Gift wants it to be a design match. This one, probably more than any that we've ever seen before, is a design match. I mean, there's been more money spent here than I can even think about. Do you think that should be the nature of the America's Cup? I mean, in my mind, there's tactical match racing in which the boats are very similar and the better match racing tactician team sailors would win the race. Here we've got maybe someone wins the pre-start, but the faster boat will probably win the race in the end. Do you think that it should be one way or the other? I think there's room for both, really. Um, I'm going to agree with you, though, on your first point, and that is that um, the, the bright spot of this event is the fact that we have two very cool um, yachts uh, that are going together. Both of them are different, um, uh, but similar. And But at that point, I mean, from a technology standpoint, and getting back to that original idea of, of building the fastest yacht, whatever that be, um, uh, this is kind of getting us back to that point. Um, I, I, but I would venture to guess that, that for this to be an inclusive event, uh, you need to get it back to a one design class of something. Um, and basically where you're putting the, the uh, the strength, the mental aptitude of the sailors against each other uh, on similarly rigged uh, yachts uh, uh, to, to really create some kind of excitement uh, in that regard. I see that as the future. After today's racing, is there anything that you would feel like you wanted to say maybe to the PRO or the race committee? <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> see, that's why Jenny's doing this. <laughs> is there anything I could say to... Um, you know, I, I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let the PRO and the and the race committee do their job. Uh, we've got uh, a member from our team that's now observing uh, that group and has been since day one. You know that, um, and I, I can imagine that's a tricky and prickly place to be for him. Um, but I will I will say this. I, I I think you know, it's not a place for me to to advise uh, our PRO. Uh, but I'm concerned if we're waiting for this perfect day. Uh, where you have perfect wind and perfect waves for 20 miles up and down a race course, that this is just not going to happen. Uh, we could be here for months uh, trying to find those, those three days to string together. Uh, so I, I would hope that um, as we get a little, you know, maybe as we get to Friday and see how the weather's looking, uh, I'm going to count on him to, to make the right call. 
Uh, I, I have no reason to believe that he didn't make the right call today. It just, from my, my humble opinion, it just seemed like today would have been a good day to be uh, racing. Going forward, if you think Friday's forecast is worse than today's, yeah. and we don't get fri racing on Friday and maybe even not on Sunday, is that going to be a really horrible thing for this? I mean, everyone's so looking forward to getting to see these guys go at it, getting to see who's faster, what's better, and ultimately who wins. If we don't see that for a week and we basically start over next week, do you think the ramifications will be too huge? Um, I don't think the ramifications will be too huge. I, I think what what's happening right now is, is uh, a level of frustration because you've got your sponsors in, you've got your friends and family in, there's a lot of people that have come a long way uh, to see these machines go at each other. Um, and I would just hate to see us get through this week and not at least have one race uh, on the water uh, so that we could show that off a little bit. Uh, next week is a new week and we'll see what happens. But let's hope they go racing on Friday, right? Yeah, please. While I'm here, at least. Yeah, while I'm here as well. <laughs> Thank you so All much. Right, no, for... whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I, I have two super softballs. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. The first one, and I just kind of want to get you, PD, I just wanted you to shoot the uh, back of the sweatshirt <laughs> here for a second. Um, uh, have you seen this there, Mark? <laughs> yes, yes, I see that. Here's my question for yes, you. Yes, sir. <laughs> if an online-based yacht club was able to actually meet <laughs> the requirements of the DD gift um, and, and present a legitimate <laughs> challenge, uh, would, you, would you support uh, <laughs> their, entry the into, no, their entry into the America's Cup in some fashion? I'll tell you what, I'll be honest with you. Please. We'll wait and see how this works out and I'll give you your answer after that. I How's like that? that? Now I have one about her. <laughs> okay. I heard a little rumor that she <laughs> wrecked your boat uh, at a little match race you guys had out on San Francisco Bay. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk about that because not I have fair. not really given you the bill for that yet. No, you said um, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. That was your donation to my Olympic campaign. <laughs> what, what you are talking about is the Inner Yacht Club Challenge, the Golden Gate Cup, which the Golden Gate Yacht Club has, uh, has run for the last two years going into its third year now, which yes. is, you know, a very impressive event, if I might say so myself. Um, and you came last year, and all I said to you and your crew was, please don't run that boat into the other boat that we had chartered uh, for that weekend. And at the end of that day, you both got wrapped up, not only into our committee boat, but then you wrapped yourself up into our other, uh, into our challenging boat. Uh, to, for uh, about and five thousand dollars, and it did go to the protest and, room, and, and even tried to protest and, essentially our team out of it, and and. What happened? It doesn't bode well <laughs> to have Tom Eamon in the protest room with Jenny and, and have us come out the loser. But <laughs> I'm thinking that he it's was right. tired that day. He was tired. Yeah. That's what happened. And you brought in a couple more Oracle guys the next day and a brand new set of sales and they won. We'll there you go. That. All right. <laughs> Let's hope they win this week. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck, Marcus. Yeah. Thanks, was, Jenny. That was great. That was really, right. really wonderful. Right. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks.